So welcome to finally another episode of <laughs> the Modular Clubhouse interview series. And I'm joined by Chris and Arthur from ATV yeah. Project in Berlin. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining. How are you? Yeah, we're very good. How about you? Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Yeah, doing well here as well. Doing well here as well. And we've been trying to plan this, but someone had to go out and uh, go to South Africa, apparently. So, um... <laughs> what? Who would that be? Winter gets cold in Germany. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, we can shake hands on that. Absolutely. Uh, but when did you get back? When did I get back? Uh, like two weeks ago. Oh, wow. Enjoy yourself there. Uh, it's great. <laughs> what a good time. I can imagine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'm just going to quickly make sure that we are not going to be disturbed by anyone else. I just got someone that was trying to disturb me. There we go. Make sure that that doesn't happen again. And again, this is this is one of those examples that I'm going to cut out afterwards, of course. That's true. I just put my phone in completely. <laughs> It, it's the same thing when you go to the cinema, right? When they say, turn off your phone, and you're like, oh, geez, yeah, absolutely. I, I, and I always think before I go, I'm going to turn it off. And then at the moment when they remind you, that's like, did I actually do it? We, we all yeah, they that. don't they don't remind you in Germany. They just yeah, they expect you to know. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Deutsche, Deutsche Gründlichkeit. Uh, exactly. <laughs> we yes, might yes, even say. Very much so. <laughs> Absolutely. So you guys are located <laughs> in one of the synth capitals of the world in Berlin. Mm -hmm. Has that played any sort of role in what you guys are up to right now? How how have you been formed? into synth by, <laughs> by, by being located there. Yeah, I mean, the, the company itself uh, was yeah, created by, by me in, in the first place. So um, I was organizing lots of uh, workshops and I was very much involved in the, the DIY community in Berlin, organizing master classes and DIY workshops with different companies like, you know, Bastel and so on. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and uh, I did a rem like at some point the community wanted to build the 16N uh, Fader Bank. Yeah. And um, yeah, and then I, uh, before we actually did that, I somehow took it as a personal challenge to redesign it and was like, okay, you know what, give me a few months and then I'll make it, you know, proper your right thing that can fit in the rack and so on. And then did that. And um, yeah, in like, Maybe nine months later, then Schneider's, uh, the buying department of Schneider's contacted me and offered me, was, uh, asked me if I wanted to make it a proper product and set it in the <laughs> shop, basically, because they want to promote, you know, local companies. So, yeah, definitely being in Berlin really helped for this. Mm -hmm. I can and, imagine, uh, yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, that's where the, it all started, right? The, 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 the 16 and the, the fader bank, essentially. Yeah. 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 So that's not actually the first module that I made, but. Um, the, the first module that I actually made was the Gato that got released after this one. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely yeah, it was the, the how the company started. Like because I did this re this remix of it, and then I was asked <laughs> to to commercialize it. That's how it uh, basically started on a, on a commercial uh, sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you you just de uh, designed the Gato beforehand, just for your personal use, or. It was also a funny story. I was working with a, uh, because of the community, Yeah. Um, I met a guy um, who wanted to make a uh, um, chief register module. And um, so we started to work on this. At the time, I was doing lots of stuff on Max for Life. So I did a prototype there and then, uh, and then did a small hardware. But we had a, kind of a disagreement on the input uh, stage. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, the Gato ended up just being the input stage of this module. So, uh, yeah, and I, 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 I just had fun playing with the circuit and just made the module for myself. And you know, when it's ready and uh, the cost of releasing a product a module is not so expensive, especially when you think of making a you know, few dozen, you know, it's not a massive amount of money to invest. So. Uh, you know, you might as well just do it and see what happens. So, yeah, this was the data. Absolutely, absolutely. And then, of course, things 
totally went out of hand and it became the success that we now know as A to V project. Yeah. Well, let's see. I mean, I'm, I'm happy that you call it a success. You know, let's see. We're, it's we're, a success. Yeah, very much a work in progress for us, but yeah. Well, work in progress could be counted as a success as well, right? Because yeah. it's it's never okay. about the end state. It's always about the journey in, in general. So, yeah. yeah. And, and, and Chris, how did you get involved in all of this into that yeah, right. well, roller coaster, it's, you might say? <laughs> it's about the people you like the friends you make along the way right <laughs> oh absolutely that's the um, other thing uh, that definitely happened uh that, that was this was fun actually how did i get involved so um i i kind of yeah during covid i, I quit my my job as as so many other people i, I guess yeah um because i i just wanted to do something as i was almost burned out and i just let myself like free float and see just what happens and i was naturally drawn to music making and instrument making and like all of the math and physics and engineering behind music um that was super interesting to me and i started um making modules and i started making instruments and i started getting into modular synths as well and at the time you have to know like <laughs> especially here in Berlin, Facebook gets less and less popular. And at the time, all of the um, synth community here in Berlin was organized on Facebook. Mm. And I thought, okay, um, I don't want to be on Facebook because it's, it's just a bad experience. <laughs> I, I prefer other ways of communicating. So what I did is create a Discord server for, for the yep. Berlin community of modular synths. And this is where Arthur and I um, got to chat at some point. Mm -hmm. And he was asking, like, just generally, hey, can someone help me with this, like, programming issue that I'm having? And at the time, I didn't realize that he was, like, completely in over his head. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think you did after the first time we actually met in person. <laughs> and um, then, we, then we met, and then he explained his plan. I was like, wow, this is uh, amazing. So I, this was, like... The DHO, obviously. Yeah. And uh, this is such an amazing instrument. I want to be part of this. And so we decided that I am going to join this project and take, we take it from there. Perfect. Because uh, when, when I looked at your uh, uh, GitHub page, of course, I, I see you immediately as being one of the uh, well core contributors on, on that. So I, uh, I assumed that mm -hmm. you've had some sort of, well, uh, engineering programming backgrounds as so many in the euro rec community but apparently yeah. arthur yeah. you don't really have that that background then if i, I understood I chris correctly or no i don't uh like one thing i want to add about the the, the berlin modular community communities even because i was running i was the admin for the facebook group Ah. And then it created then the Discord, but we did not know each other, and I wasn't even really aware of the Discord actually raising up for for quite a while. And then when we all, you know, looked out of the window after COVID, then started realizing that you know different stuff actually started organizing completely independently from all the physical stuff I was organizing. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of a, a funny thing. But yeah, to come back to my background, I'm um, I'm a scientist actually. I'm a molecular biologist so i'm oh, nice you know technical in some ways and like use you know uh computers and everything but not in the programming sense so um but I, at, at least yeah. you especially as a molecular bi biologist you'll probably have to have done some sort of simulations at uni uh simulations not so much i was into like really cell physiology and uh, molecular interaction so these are stuff you can simulate but i was you know in cell physiology you can't really you know at some point you have to be able to go experimental so it's better Absolutely, at some yeah, point yeah. like you know it's a whole work to do simulations and it's a completely different one to do the experimental work and actually just spending too much time doing simulations at some point is not really worth it so <laughs> might as well it's faster just to do it in real life and see what happens that, that that's the reason why i did physics yeah, yeah that's yeah, the yeah. reason why i went into physics because then you can simulate a lot, a lot more <laughs> mm -hmm. i never want to get my hands dirty but that, that's great and so how did you guys then i've got a feeling i 
have a uh, a good guess on how Chris got involved into modular or synthesizers in general uh, as a COVID while a dealing mechanism. I, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, I, 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 I you plead guilty that, to that yeah. as well. So yeah. yeah so you can I, say that. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was. I think it was more like. Um, yeah. It was. It was during COVID, and I think that enabled a lot. But at the same time, it was more like me being sick of the the job I did at the time and just wanting to just take some time off and see where I'm, what I'm naturally drawn to when I just have all the time in the world, basically. Absolutely. But did you have any sort of um, uh, musical background or uh, musical education before that or? I don't have any formal musical education. I mostly come from the engineering perspective and like just the interest of how music gets composed in, in a mathematical way. That is that is kind of where I'm coming from, but more and more kind of getting into the music as well, because I, I love listening to music. I, I, and I, like, I used to DJ, I used to like trying a bit of producing in the, in the past, um, but that was never like instrument making was never something that I imagined doing myself. <laughs> <laughs> but then well, again, you think about when you make music, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And and what kind of music are we then talking about? Mainly electronic music, or yes, for me. Well, sure. of yeah, course. Yeah, well, it, music, yeah. it, it's a fair bet in Berlin, of course. Ever <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you are yeah, sure. talking about your 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 mu musical well backgrounds. How did you get yeah. involved into all this and, and how did that mature in, in general? I mean, in general, I, I come from a artist family. So kind of like weirdly, like I'm the, the family, the part of the family that went into like doing some, uh, you know, uh, academic research and stuff like this. So, 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 you, so you were a complete, a you were a complete disappointment to your parents when you said, Absolutely, I want to be yeah, a my scientist. Oh, my wow. father was a photographer, <laughs> my mom was a dancer, and then I went to do science. <laughs> like, yeah, that's the a, black that's sheep of the family, I exactly. immediately uh, understand that. It's terrible. It's like, but no, then no, eventually no, you no, went no, into no, the family do, business. First. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. I ended up, yeah, doing this, you know. Uh, yeah, no, but I, so, I mean, I was always surrounded by, you know, music and like, Artist stuff all the time, like uh, that's how I was raised. Um, but my instrument was the drums. Started uh, when I was like uh, ten, something like this. I've oh, been nice. playing for years. Played in I don't know how, like more bands that I can count, and was started with like you know death metal <laughs> as a teenager, <laughs> as one does, and uh, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I've uh, interviewed so many people in the Eurorack modular synth space, and I wouldn't be surprised if the average is that at least 80%, uh, mm. myself included, have a, 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 a punk and metal background. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so funny, right? For, yeah. for me as well. Like, yeah. Metal music was like, in my from 17 to 21, that was like my music. Mm. Yeah. Not 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 yeah, anymore. Anyway. Or uh... I still can listen to some of it. Like uh, In Flames is like the We Wrote to Remain. Great album. Listening oh, to it wow. still. It's oh, fucking absolutely. Great album. Well, Clayman as well. And uh, yeah. Oh, it's superb, superb. And my 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 theory is is of course that when you talk about uh, punk metal, it's all very much DIY and uh, a lot of the, I always call it the Pippi Longstockings approach. I've never done this before, but I'm pretty damn sure I can do it. And and that approach is so much uh, represented within uh, within the the maker space within within Eurorack within Eurorack makers specifically. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 funny, and I I always intend I'm not going to talk about metal this time. But it always happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and how about you, R2? Are, are, are you still listening to some of that music as well? Or is that something uh, that you saw as part of that journey? I I listen to a lot of things. And I have like maybe like six months phases that I would go from one completely oh, yeah, different yeah. style of music to another. 
Oh, recently I'm a lot into drum and bass, but somehow I'm listening now more and more to my old like indie, like uh, you know, punk dance stuff from New York that I was listening to when I was a teenager, like you nice. know, click click click, and uh, I mean, and then the, the uh, British counterparts like uh, LCD Sound System and uh, Hot, you know, Hot Clips and so on. But then I would be listening also to some tools and some Kotlira and some, you know, <laughs> just goes from one thing to the other, whatever, you know, I'm, there's some stuff, you know, it's a matter of focus, you know, some stuff you have to be focused on mm -hmm. and really like, uh, set yourself and on doing and so on. Mm -hmm. But some others, you know, like listening to music is like, I don't, I'm not trying to is listen it... to one thing or the no. other. It's like, yeah, whatever, like draws my ear. And, so, it's an so. integral part of your life and it has to be there but it's not yeah. oh it's one always thing well, yeah. yeah recently like in terms of music one thing that i, I like really discovered a big uh like fascination for and actually that comes from my from having a daughter is ballet music <laughs> <laughs> really i'm listening to like my, my daughter is like a massive fan of ballet but i'm listening to this music and like i'm watching also uh, ballet videos with her and like somehow yeah i watched uh, like the nutcracker and like see myself crying on it i'm like what the hell is happening <laughs> well so, well again yeah, again crazy. that that's yeah, it's fantastic. if you, if, if, you look, yeah, if you listen to a lot of those that classical music and if you then overlay those arrangements with what uh what modular artists uh, yeah. people like surgeon but also people like colin bendis how they build yeah. up their um uh, their sets and if you then compare that to how um uh, the the actual arrangement of a classical piece for instance nutcracker has been designed i, I see a lot of overlap there too so I, I'm not surprised, but it's absolutely it's, it's great to hear that. Well, in 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 all essence, music is music, and as long as mm -hmm. you're able to okay. to find the 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 art into it, it, it really works. No superb. Yeah. But you were saying so you were playing drums, and we we got on yes. on the segue, of course, and then from <laughs> oh, drums you, you you started playing in metal bands, punk bands, cover bands. I'm assuming as well. And then what happened? So much somehow, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, everything. Uh, basically, no. What happened is that I started traveling, so I moved from. I'm French, actually, by the way. I don't know that. Oh, that's I cool. wouldn't have guessed by your <laughs> accent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I moved out of Paris and uh, went to study in the Netherlands, actually. Uh, oh, whereabouts? In, uh, actually, in um, uh, Leiden. In Leiden. Oh, nice. Perfect. Yeah, yeah that's one yeah, of the. So I stayed, what, it's it's uh, a beautiful university, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, for science, it's definitely a great place to be. And so, yeah, I stayed for almost a year there. And uh, yeah, but so, yeah, I started traveling with, you know, Raspberry programs and so on. And um, so I couldn't carry a drum with me. So I wasn't, I've always been drawn to electronic music, anyways. Um, so I always uh, started tinkering as well. But since I couldn't play the drums, then I started really getting into actually making music on my laptop. And then when I made it to Berlin, I started, well, got my own place and then started uh, creating, like, or buying some stuff for my studio. And uh, yeah, quite fast, I actually got into Eurac, uh, which was, yeah, that was maybe like in 2013, 2014. And uh, but so, that's a big step going from 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 a laptop immediately to Eurorack. Um, were there any so, sort of gateway drugs uh, involved? Yeah, uh, the first synthesizer I got was a present from my dad, which was a uh, microbrute from Arturia. Yeah. A, a proper French product as well, then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it had some patch uh, patch uh, patch points. Absolutely, on it. yeah. And then I got some MFB stuff. So Tanspare, there was also the Sins 2, the little blue box. Um, and um, yeah, so the thing is, yeah, my wife actually comes from Bulgaria and uh, is a good friend of uh, Kink. And um, so uh, I was exposed to uh, the stuff that he, he has, like all these MFB boxes that he was, like all these videos that he has from 10 years ago. And uh, so I wanted to do the same. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, so I got some of these. 
uh, and I wanted the 303. So I got the TT 303 first, like the uh, 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 cyclone, whatever it's called. I can't remember exactly. Uh, the cyclone. Uh, uh, because it was, the, yeah. Yeah, I was debating in between like building a um, Dogfa uh, 303 or buying the, the actual thing. But actually, what happened is that I got this one. Then I sold it, and then I got a um, uh, 203 clone, um, the, which I still have. Actually, I built it DIY. And, wow. Um, Are you uh, using it? Yeah, that's so I'm still using it every day. It's, <laughs> it's like my, my favorite module. Uh, that's the one I would never sell. And uh, yeah, so that's Great. how I, I got into it. And the idea was like, OK, so I'm going to save money by building stuff myself. Which was a great mistake. I think. That, yeah. that 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 I mean, that's that, that's the, the, now, like the beginning of the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened? I spent the exact amount of uh, exact same amount of money. Uh, got a lot more stuff that uh, lots of it that I, I ended up not really using. But yeah. And now you're way too busy with A to V. Um. What? Well, what for? Depends. <laughs> <laughs> that's the question, indeed. Well. If there's any sort of, because you know, uh, always a good question to ask is, is this now for you something that you consider your day job, or are you still doing things uh, next to it as well? Yeah. Yeah, for me, yeah, it's my full time um, job. For Chris, uh, I have other gigs. <laughs> other gigs. Oh wow! Welcome to the free. Welcome to the freelance world, people. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> gig economy you know gig economy yeah absolutely yeah so i'm, I'm not assuming you're drive for uber then <laughs> <Quite. laughs> no 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 but absolutely that that's 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 also part of um the current state of the eura community is that it's not always a full-time thing it's it's always something that is an integral part of who you are of what you want to spend your time on Hmm. and especially people with a an academic background and and you you talk to people a lot whether they are engineers whether they're scientists whether and they all have this approach to i'm going to do what i want to do if it's going to be a year two years five years whether it's a postdoc hmm. or indeed starting a, a a company i can always reevaluate after a while and how how do you guys look at that from a uh, where am I going to be in five years is the stereotypical question. So I'm going to say, where are you going to be in four years? Four years. Well, I'll let you start because I'm curious. No, <laughs> I do, that's, you. that's a nice way yeah. to push a question off of you. Yeah. <laughs> I always, I always t tend to avoid this kind of question because like this is, this is usually not how I, how I work. I, um, I usually, just play by ear. This is this is what I've been doing my whole life, and it's been working quite well for me. Um, I mean, in an ideal case, like that's kind of a little bit of a dream. In an ideal case, we would have a business that supported the both of us, which is currently which is currently not the case. Mm -hmm. um, but that would be that would that would be like a dream. That would be a dream come true. It would be amazing. Okay. Well, um, let, let, let's make sure that the audience understands that. <laughs> so we've got a common goal as the, as the as 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 the audience as the community this is going this is a heartfelt plea from chris buy more mm -hmm. atv project oh. modules mm -hmm. uh, as we say in dutch and i'm, I'm gonna see if um if arthur still uh knows a bit of dutch Ooh, that was yeah. a while ago so uh, uh, i'm gonna yeah. test you i'm gonna test you and well sure, chris sure. actually was in south africa so maybe he can uh Understand a bit of Afrikaans. Sure. Help ATV de Winterdoor. So help them through the winter. That's a Dutch saying. Um, mm. So again, buy their modules, people. Buy their modules. Yeah, help yeah. these help these poor people out, please. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think oh, I have well, to worry we're, about we're them. Fine, you know. I don't think I have to worry about you. No, but uh, shifting into, uh, into a bit more of that... Um, into that journey so um actually you just mentioned okay you started off I mean, initially designed the gato then go into the uh, the 16n and then being well uh forced by schneiders to uh 
to do it professionally. Kindly asked. Yeah. I mean, at this time, I was also working for this startup. I mean, I was, this, yeah, it was doing some COVID testing. Um, they thought I had, they had a new technology. I figured out after a few months that it was not going to work. So it wasn't a very, a very easy decision to make. <laughs> Kind of, uh, yeah, sometimes the stars out. align, right? Sometimes it just yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I decided to go my own way and uh, do this thing, but um, yeah, I mean, you know. But then, from uh, after you were, um, <laughs> what, what what was happening there? <laughs> there is a dog in the background. I don't know if you can see. I can't. Yeah, but, no, uh, no, I can't. And uh, well, oh, it's behind you. Yeah, it's behind Chris, I think. But he's 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 knocking things around then, hopefully. No, no, it's just like sleeping, making weird noises. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. <laughs> as as dogs do, uh, or as yeah, yeah. or as kids do sometimes as well. Oh yeah, yeah. As I as I was just telling you guys just before we started the recording, uh, my youngest son walked in because he couldn't sleep. Um, yeah. And, and you mentioned already that you uh, you spent quite some time with your daughter uh, uh, on a musical level with ballet music, um, and, and what this uh, what's her take on what what her dad does? If she looks at those <laughs> modules, what does she think? She's three, so uh, yeah, uh, those she, well she... at that age they're purely honest. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well. She just started being three. Oh, um, congrats! Uh, like two weeks ago, actually. Um, yeah, no, she's uh, she, she's playing. Yeah, we 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 play with the the instruments herself. She has a sixteen inch, like an old uh, beta testing unit that is completely beat up. Uh, um, but yeah, she likes. You know, she takes the cables, plugs them into all the holes and everything. That's and that's that the stuff. most interesting thing for the kids, right? Yeah. And, uh, Isn't it for everyone? Yeah, I mean, I found her a few times. You know, like just I have a little modular system in my in my room, and nice. uh, I don't know, just left it running. And then I don't know, after a while, we don't hear my daughter, and then find her, you know, with the headphones on her head, dancing around, <laughs> <laughs> listening to whatever music oh, was coming out of the modular. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. Precious right, moments, let's say. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But then, of course, uh, things. Well, uh, they the, the ball got rolling with the uh, with the sixteen yeah. N. What what happened after that? How did that then evolve to where you guys are right now? So um, yeah. So before, so the next one after. So there was the sixteen N that was released first, and the Gator. The Gator is a very weird thing, and it's um, it's quite difficult to get. So it was not an easy sale. Mm -hmm. And when uh, you're a small company, that's even more difficult to to sell. Let's say so. Um, um, it took a while to kind of figure out the design language, and it's something that I've been always thinking about and like trying to really define. You know, what do I want to do? Like because one can make, you know, especially in your act, since it's so granular, like the, the um, instrument that you design, you know, you can make a filter, you know, but mm -hmm. there are so many filters out there. It's like, then you can think, oh, yeah, can, how can I make the, the filter special? And how can I make this thing? You know, can, how, how can I make it sound better? How can I make it weirder or whatever? But somehow what I figured out is that I think, at least for us, what I think would work is actually think it the, the other way. It's not thinking about how to make a field better, it's to think about what experience you want to create mm -hmm. and what sort of um, feeling and interactions you want to, to, to create and then you design an instrument that actually fits this. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, for example, with the... Um, um, the um, yeah the DHO one of the thing like my idea so that was two years ago uh, yeah. when we started working on this so and this idea actually developed a lot and nowadays it matured a lot so I will come back to the, the newer version uh, later but the the initial idea was the DHO was that I wanted to make an instrument that would keep for as long as possible this feeling when you get the first instrument that you mess around with it. 
you know, like you get whatever, like a, a new module or like a, any piece of gear. The first thing you would do is just mess around with it. Absolutely. You know? And um, before you read then, the manual, you first say, exactly, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm going to figure this out on my own. And then after a while, yeah. you're going to take the manual, but you'll still keep fiddling. Yeah. But even when you get uh, to read the manual, you, you, you do stuff and it doesn't matter. You're just experimenting and you're trying things. You're not actually trying to really do anything specific, but you're just testing it out, you know, trying to explore the module itself. And, uh, but then the, the feeling that I have is that when I have an instrument for too long, then I ended up, I end up like figuring out, figuring out the sweet spots and just aiming for these and not really exploring anymore and just using one instrument always for the same thing, you know, and not really using all the other stuff that it can do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, so the idea was to, um, allow for, um, this exploration and this sensational novelty to be kept not necessarily for as long as possible but very be, make it very easy to reproduce yeah, yeah and that was the idea of having this algorithmic uh, modulation and using um this algorithm for the video game industry called simplex yeah or like yeah simplex or um Perlin, actually the, the more famous uh, version and um so basically just using one button or one way to uh, lose a bit of familiarity with the, the module and kind of make it new again and kind of create something that allows you when you're stuck, when you don't know what to do, then you go to it because you know you will get new stuff with it, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, so that was kind of the, the idea um, behind the way I wanted uh, people to interact with it. Mm -hmm. And um, then all the sound generation in this uh, harmonic generator and all of this, this was actually more inspired by uh, one of my favorite synthesizers, uh, which is the Code Delta, which is a, an old string <laughs> synthesizer, divide down, but you had a kind of an organ drawbar thing oh, nice. that you could use to um, uh, control the, the, the volume of four octaves of square waves. But what I realized quite fast uh -huh. was um, a bit of a POC, like proof of concept um, yeah, yeah. digitally, is that when you add two uh, waveforms, two octaves apart, but exactly on the same phase, you actually don't create new harmonics. You just create more, like you change the balance. It's like you're using an EQ, basically. You add yeah, more, yeah, uh, yeah. higher or a bit of lower, but you don't create any more harmonics. You need phasing effects. You need some stuff like this. Or what you need is to reduce the amount of harmonics by going to more fundamental waves, so um, sine waves or triangles, for example. So triangles is what we used in the this uh, uh, oscillator uh, for two reasons. The first one is that um, sine waves are boring, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> uh, they're, they're a bit too pure, you know, like uh, they have their uses, and it's... Um, <laughs> But just as a single tone that you, you don't, you know, it's very pure. It doesn't really have harmonics and you don't have much presence with it. Some people say it's beautiful. Some people <laughs> say it's beautiful. That's true. But um, I mean, I agree, but that's not, you know, it doesn't feel very personal. I don't use sine waves in my music much. It's, um, it's, it's more that pure versus complex approach where a sine wave is very pure. And then you can do a lot of things with a sine wave. Um, and it maybe also boils down to the old um, uh, East versus West Coast synthesis approach, where I think that if you, if you ask that same question to someone who is purely Bukla esque, they might say, "Well, I can build everything from a sine wave." But then, sure, yeah, everything is a sine wave. Yeah, I mean, like everything. Well, that, that's the Fourier analysis talking. Uh, sure, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, then also it's, you know, and the other reason uh, is that this is already a pretty expensive module. <laughs> and um, you would have then to convert every triangle into sine wave, which well, would have make it even more expensive. Yeah. And from my testing, I've, I felt like it sounds, I, I prefer the way it sounded with triangles and uh, signs. And um, 
So, yeah, I mean, I make my own instruments, so I kind of get to decide. What yeah, you can decide. <laughs> you're, you're in charge. So, uh, yeah, the only one you have to fight on this might, might be Chris, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can get into that later. <laughs> uh, but then again, but, yeah. if, if someone who is using your uh, DHO and they want to have a sine wave, from how I've gotten to uh, to understand the module from from some videos i uh, uh i watched as um well as i do I, I want to keep updated of course and i want to understand what's out there in the market and what's what's happening people could theoretically just patch their dho through uh let's say three or four filters and patch it back into the dho and then go with that yeah. if they want to have a sine wave yeah. S sorry, Chris. Yeah, actually, that's uh, funny about that. <laughs> <laughs> actually, with the DHO, like, funny enough, uh, I know it's an expensive module, but there was this concept of uh, economical design, in a way. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's a module that is very independent. It doesn't require much out of the module to actually make it live. Mm -hmm. And uh, this modulation, internal modulation, is actually there to... To, um, because for me, a timber is not only just a, yeah. There is a big difference between a tone and a timber for me. It's like yeah, you create a sound, but the sound is not you know something static. It's something that moves around, and there's time and variations and all of this. And this is where the modulation and internal modulation actually came in. Um, it's a very complex module that has a lot of things going on and a lot of inputs and outputs. And uh, it would be very expensive um, mm -hmm. to give life to it in, to the degree that it has on its own now by um, having a bunch of, like you would need, like there's 10 oscillators, in, like 10 LFOs, uh, all the modulation that can be associated to random modulation and everything. So you would need a massive rack of bunch of modulators to be able to just make this thing work, you yeah. know? So the idea was to, if one of the rules then actually became from the design of this is that if we make something that is so complex that would require so much to make it work, then uh, just put it in it, you know, just make it more expensive, but put the stuff in it directly. So that don't make any sort of concessions in, in that regard. Yeah. Yeah, because if you get uh, like uh, the other offerings of uh, complex oscillators and so on, you know, they're very static and everything, and then you would need at least two or three LFOs, a bunch of envelopes, random generators and everything. So yeah, okay, the, the oscillator might be like a um, 100, 200 euro cheaper, but then you would spend- Even more know, on the external modulation on else, sources. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I want this thing, you know, to really work on its own and like, and actually end up being like, I sometimes just, when I'm working also, I'll just patch it, put the, the, the LFOs and, just have it droning behind me while I do some <laughs> some routing and like make some new PCBs and so on. Indeed, and, and then uh, with that design philosophy in mind, as in, for, well, on the one hand, you want to make it economical, but you don't want to make any sort of um, uh, functional concessions to it. Mm. Um, where did the idea come from to then have also the the expander to it? Um, has that been something that you might have wanted to include in the main module as well? Or is it more from a flexibility standpoint to have made that decision? The expander was because it was very simple to do. Um, yep. And um, it was something that um, would add some more functionality and just mm -hmm. generally um, that actually came a bit later in the development, the, the expander. Yeah. I, initially, I didn't really think of putting it in there. Uh, but the reason of, like, what I think would be more interesting in looking at it instead of, like, offering the module plus the expander was, like, if you compare it to having the module with all of this function that the expander has um, in one big module, I felt like putting these functions in the main module directly, we actually lose the, um, the, the focus a bit from what this yeah. is supposed to be. 
I, I, I think I, uh, yeah, I think I, I know what you mean. Yeah. So the idea was to, um, at the beginning, I didn't want, particularly want to put it in. Then it became easier to to make it because uh, we are not, you know, like in this oscillator, because the um, the focus is not really like a, the oscillator core itself. It's more like everything that's happening around it. So we so use, it's it's uh, the whole surrounding. It's the whole it's the yeah, whole yeah, approach. Exactly. Yeah. So we used a, a VCO IC directly, like a, it's an analog generator um, from um, sound semiconductor that works extremely good and um yeah so the idea was also to kind of reduce the amount the, the load work that we would have uh, into developing this thing which could have took a year and a half <laughs> which is quite a lot and um but these ic had all these outputs already available straight away just had to plug them to a connector basically so um i thought why not and then we decided to to include it directly into the in the box basically so People can then decide uh, what they want to do with it. It's a big module, it's 36 HP. Mm. And then adding the expander, then we are at 42 HP, which is, you know, I mean, back in the day, it's like 84 HP was the, the size of rack. Now, yeah, absolutely. Bit, yeah. But, uh, to, me, uh, to, to me at the time, it felt like, um, because it came late in the development process, it was, we we were done with the product. We we had the DHO as we wanted it. We were like, this is amazing. This is this is this is sounding good. This has all of the the features that we want to give it without cluttering the UI, without like having um, too much information uh, overload for for people. And then what what we did was like ask around, like like what are things that you that you are lacking of 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 this like. And then people started giving us comments about like, oh, like, it would be nice to like have other waveforms. It would be nice mm -hmm. to have um, other like like the PWM and, and this kind of thing. The sync was really something and that sync. people wanted. To and, the business. and then we basically, for me, it, it was like fulfilling these wishes without like tainting the original product. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you already said we, we, we've developed this masterpiece we know that we can add, yeah, we can you. add, we can, we, no, but, but we, we, well, again, I, I'm looking at it from a, from a, from an art perspective where you might say, okay, well, we already created this, this masterpiece. We've, we've, we've got this piece of art, which we've put our whole, uh, being into, mm. but we do know that, uh, for instance, people, um, who are gonna be using this going forward have asked for additional functionality. Do we then yeah. want to have that? We want to deliver for those people, but we mm -hmm. don't want to touch upon this masterpiece. If we were to, let's call it Frankenstein it onto the same module right. yeah, yeah, and yeah. then, uh, uh, well, address those concerns, or could we do it differently? And I think that that's, uh, ha that's a very strong thing to do because what you're telling people with that is the DHO on its own without the expander is is our vision is our um, is our masterpiece. This is what we've mm -hmm. and I, I use masterpiece in the old um, meaning like this is this is what we've done to prove to the world that okay here we are right. And exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad to see it this way because that's exactly the intention yeah. that we had with the, this product was to just make the biggest and <laughs> baddest thing that we could in order to, you know, attract attention. Honestly, absolutely. Uh, which, yeah. I mean, it was also like a, a like a dream of mine. It was like I had this idea, like I'm gonna make it, you know. But um, it was a lot to chew on for a small company like ours. Uh, <laughs> maybe a bit too much honestly um but yeah but now i i do want to uh, because you you mentioned uh you were in a bit over your head with 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 the dho and then you uh you were looking for some help that's how your counterpart who's sitting right there and <laughs> right next to you yeah. so now and if you're willing to share that what was the um the the main challenge you were facing at that time I mean, 
Yeah. Sure. Uh, the the thing is, I. Press it again. Oh, it was super simple. I uh, we have this. Um, so we use this microcontroller, the RP2040, uh, which is the, the Pi Pico, which is very popular nowadays in Europe. Uh, that I wanted to connect to this uh, IC. Oh, that, yeah. uh, yes. Like yeah. is the kind of the, what would do all the CV control of everything, like inputs and outputs, like all the digital to analog and analog to digital conversion. I could connect it to an Arduino, but then to connect it to this one somehow I could not make it work. And then went on the Discord and talked with Chris. You know, I was like, yeah, okay, so uh, maybe I can do that. Like, yeah, yeah. Then I, you know, we, I mentioned a bit what I wanted to do. <laughs> But I was like, yeah, maybe we should meet, you know, and have a coffee. Like, uh, just brave all the, the, the regulations that were going on at the time. And then you asked me, yeah, so what do you actually want to do? It's like, well, I would like to do that. I, I prefer like an Excel, like a, 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 a digital, you know, PowerPoint presentation for him. Mm. And uh, then he had just asked me, you know, how much do you know about programming? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so it's like I, okay, I love if, these if, origin if you're, if you're stories. Struggling, yeah. If you're struggling with this, then we should probably talk. <laughs> I can help you, but it's going to cost you. That's what you told him. Yeah, we made a deal. <laughs> we <laughs> yeah, a deal. Uh, yeah no, and, uh, but one of the deal that was made, I don't know if you want to, to talk about that. But um, what, what, what exactly? No, because the, one of the, I mean, maybe we can talk about this and see if we keep it. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like, um, basically, the, the conversation was, okay, should I hire you as a freelance and you do the programming? Ah, right, right. Or uh, then you get a share of the production and of the, the sales, and then you become a designer. That's the point you wanted to, want to make. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, so like, sorry. I was, I was actually, I was actually, <laughs> I was actually expecting something else. So, um, uh, the the thing was like, I had, I when when Arthur asked me, I was like, because I this is something I, I've been wanting to do for 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 a long time or for like, let's say. It was it was kind of a dream of mine at the time to work on an actual product. Uh, be, even before you took your sabbatical, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah, even before that, I mean, there was like a, a, a kind of a hand wavy dream of mine, but at the time it was like I, I want I want to build something that people potentially can buy. Mm -hmm. um, but I also had kind of my my own rules for that. So I think when we met, um, I think it was. It was very clear at uh, like an early early point that I want to be more involved. That this is not going to be like a, a task for me, and, and you tell me what I'm what I'm supposed to do, and I do it. Hmm. But rather like a ping pong game or like a like a collaboration. A true partnership. I think that, that was yeah. kind of one of my that was one of my actual. I mean, I, I didn't imagine that we like would go as far as we as we are doing now. Hmm. But for this particular project, I said, okay, this, these are these are my terms. I, I want to be more involved, and um, I want to have a say. I, I know this is still your idea, and this is still your dream, but I want to have a voice in this somehow. Yeah, I want to be part of that dream. Um, yeah. Yes, so in, in, to some extent, um, I want I want my my, my name to be you on that too. Thing as well. Yeah, yeah I, I want my name to be on this as well. Um. And at the same time, I think I think it was already then when I said that eventually I want to make the code open source. Yeah, it was already at our first meeting when I mm -hmm. said if I work on this, the code will be open source at some point. Yeah, indeed. And, and, and I um, said we can still find it on GitHub. So yeah, <laughs> can we? I, I don't think so. Not well, yet. well yet. I, I can find a lot of code on the, uh, on 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 GitHub. I can't find yeah, the DHO one yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah um yeah so that's something that we will do as well so everything is going to get open source um wow that's really impressive um yeah and uh, the thing is i mean the reason is very clear and uh i don't know maybe you can explain a bit more but 
Um, you mean like why why we're doing this? Yeah, why why we're I'm doing this? this? Yeah. So my my philosophy is I I mean I'm like I've been a programmer for for forever and I, I mainly work on like software, <laughs> not hardware projects. Um, but at the same time, I'm a big fan of open source. And um, there are people, um, let's just to mention Emily from uh, from Mutable Instruments. Absolutely. Um, yeah. She put everything out there at some point, right? Uh, like there was a rule to it, but at some point she put everything out there for the for the community to have. And that's just such a beautiful thing. And that inspired me and that inspired so many other people to, to get into this space and to, to build awesome things and to hack existing things, to improve on, on, on stuff and to kind of um, make completely new things out of it. And at the same time, I, I, I see the point when, when people want to protect the IP and, and things like that. But for, for me, I think what's more important is the community around something. And um, if you're missing out on some sales in the end, um, I don't know, my, my belief that something greater is going to happen if you open source something um, is, still, is still there. And it's not, it's not maybe for your own good entirely, but it's for everyone's good. And at the, at the same time, mutable instruments didn't go bankrupt because they went open source. So I, I think if you're, yeah. if you're, I think it's, it's, it's one of the key reasons why they were so successful is, is uh, because everything was out there. The community, yeah. It's yeah, community. And also, I See, I, I, you need to truly stand behind what you deliver because you're going to make, it's one of the most transparent things you can do. Uh, yeah. But it's also going to show, and it's it's going to open up a lot of feedback. And it, and and I love uh, the the reference to Mutable, uh, who were truly uh, well, uh, she was actually pioneering um, that whole open source uh, way of thinking. And well, now after the fact, we yeah. can look back and see how that's how that's had a tremendous impact on. Mm -hmm. Not just the well, the, the open source community, but also specifically this the synth and Eurorack community in general. Yeah. So I mean, there are like maybe like three things I'd like to to add to this. So the the thing is, um, I think like the whole mutable um, instrument thing, like it got very famous as well. Also, like for good and like probably not great reasons because also a lot of clones came out and so on, which is not what I think open source is really about. And I think that uh, Befaco, for example, um, oh, yeah. uh, actually went to open source maybe even earlier than that. And, um, but because like it became less famous about that because um, with uh, mutable instruments, you could just go on the website, get all the design files and and that's it, yeah, absolutely. And but yeah. of course, well, you, you had the, the the software was open source, but the, the yeah, modules, no, but, uh, yeah. all the schematics as well. Um, yeah, yeah. And actually, what I think is important to what I want with the open source thing is not uh, it's not that I want to stop people from making clones or whatever. Then it's fine, you know. Whoever wants to to make their own, that's just, that's all right. Uh, it's more that I want people to learn and uh, we got into that also you for programming you you, you didn't study programming mm -hmm. right um same for me i didn't study any electronic engineering but i learned it from people like whether it's open source or just people like sharing on the internet you know like uh uh if you saw or do the shelf or music from outer space and all of this you know they were just sharing their um the, the, the schematics and uh, the electronics online and what i th would like to also reproduce for us and that's the reason why we don't have the open source stuff out yet it's because we're actually working on documenting it mm. oh nice and i don't yeah. want to just releasing this stuff like like this and just be like yeah, yeah. here is the schematic and um do whatever with it you know i want to, I mean, it's going to take a while. It takes a while to write this stuff and explain it and everything. But uh, I want people to like look at the, the thing. I actually have the, the approach that, uh, you know, for example, Moritz Klein is having of like designing oh, yeah. stuff and yeah, yeah. Uh, writing documentation and explaining the, um, all the schematics and how things work and so on. And um, 
So um, I'd like to do this also for what we do, which is something that is not aimed at being DIY. It's more, you know, like probably slightly more complex uh, than um, just like a yeah. simple, uh, simpler module. You know, it's not meant to be educational modules design, like uh, what Moyes Klein is doing. Um, but I think a lot of people would also like learn from seeing how these things are done. Also, on the other hand, is that this is, I think there's a bit of um, candor and uh, like a, some sort of like a, it's not owning your mistakes, but like. Um, to some extent. Yeah, to some extent. You know, I know that uh, the, some of my designs are not perfect and there are lots of the, uh, little things that could be improved and so on. Um, but at the end of the day, um, you know, you it's shouldn't a, forget it's a what journey. you're doing. It's a journey and you can exactly. only learn from your mistakes. Yeah, and I, I, I don't think I, I don't want to call it them mistakes either because things are working and so far, have, like, you know, bugs have been polished and like, I, I cannot really make the thing crash. Yeah, some things could be, it's like improvements could be made. It's not like anything is broken. I'm really, we're really no, 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 no. Are not working. That's, 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 again, that's, that's also part of that journey, right? Where well, you can see in hindsight, you can always see, Oh, I've couldn't, I could I could have improved this. I could have improved yeah. that. But that, that like, that's example, the human condition. The... That that that's yeah. progress. That's personal growth as well. And again, as you say, if you're Absolutely. transparent yeah. about that, and that's something I want to talk about also on the documentation and say, okay, so things are done this way, and the product is this way. And uh, but after like three, four, five years of doing this, then I've learned that this can be slightly done better, and that's the reason. And I want to also share, like also experience, but also explain how things evolve over time, like uh, in the life of a designer, uh, like making this stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, you know, we're not in there for financial gain. Like, you know, you don't get massive leverage from running a Eurorack -right company. No, like... but, st but still buy their modules, uh, audience. Because... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Please buy our modules. Yeah, 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 I would say, like, you know, keep yourself updated. Like, we've got some super cool stuff coming. Uh, that, oh. That's 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 another topic I want to discuss, but please continue. Apologies for yeah, interrupting. Yeah, yeah we won't be able to tell much, but yeah, sure. Well, uh, I'll, I'll wait until you guys keep drinking those beers. We'll uh, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll There's two more in the fridge, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Love to hear that. Ooh. Which were you discussing? The sack track? Yeah, I got one. The, the Yamaha one. Yeah. Just the one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, it's... Uh, at first, I thought it's just going to be... You have one. Like, like an open... No, I haven't... No, I um, I don't have the funds to uh, <laughs> to do all the things I want to do. But I've been uh, drooling over some of the, the videos. It reminds me a bit of uh, the Teenage Engineering OPZ, essentially. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and then I realized that the OPZ is actually not so much more expensive. <laughs> and I'm kind of thinking, yeah, should I return it and get an OPZ instead? <laughs> but <laughs> at the end, I'm like, like the thing is, the, the reason why I got it is because since I started doing this, I haven't really been making music much. And um, like I, I do play quite a bit of video games, but also I stopped playing because of my daughter as well. So I have, you know, PlayStation. But I actually started playing again because I got a Steam Deck, mm. which is portable on the device devices. that you can, you know, turn on and off super fast and so on. So I thought, yeah, maybe that's what I. You know, when I saw it, I'm like, yeah, that's a Steam Deck of groove machines, you know, groove boxes. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, it's super presetty. It's You've got very little access to the, the sound and everything. You can load some samples, but it's only on kind of the sampler thing. Um, it sounds OK. Um, but at the end, I think what's important is that, yeah, it's a machine on which I'm actually making music. Mm -hmm. And I'm having fun. <laughs> I'm just taking it on my, my, my knees and doing the things. Maybe like something handheld that is more meant to be played with the thumb would be slightly better. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be that'd be great. That'd be the main or that. the, the polyen one. But it's <laughs> yeah, like kind of but yeah, the mate can do that, yes. Yeah. And um yeah, but we'll trade a mate. I want a mate as well. I want to get one of these. So 
I had it, but I didn't like the the tracker stuff. I, I, yeah. can't, I cannot get into the tracker workflow. It's it's not for me. Mm. It's it, it's on the one hand, it, working with trackers is an acquired taste, um, but it's also something that if you really are a if you have the tracker mindset then you don't ever want to do anything else sure yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i've actually yeah, I mean... um i've actually bought what just hold on. I've, I've bought one of these it's, it's like a oh, yeah. it's a very very, very it's, it's it's a very it's cheap a simulator ah, yeah okay. but the one thing you can is you still do the mate on it exactly you can have yeah. like <clears throat> you've got like all of the old <laughs> yeah what? and you can have oh, all this, sorts so this of... is run by teensy as well no it's a it's a cortex it's something else oh, okay it's just a cortex I'm, I'm assuming but this one um and and if you go back to the old days of custom uh game boy rooms a couple mm. of the first trackers out there i forgot the name of it um, but that was actually one of the reasons why I why I, why I bought this is to get a hold of the evolutions of all of those uh, old school sixteen uh, bit tracker software. Um, What's it and, called? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, LSDJ is such a silly name. Yeah, the Little LS, sound uh, DJ, LSD, yeah. LSDJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but there are even more um, well m portable trackers out there. So essentially, where well, you can also load in uh, external sam uh, samples as well, and you can really yeah. go, you can go ham at it. Yeah. But it's again, uh, and I, I I totally recognize what you're saying there, R2, because um, my kids are uh, a lot older. They're they're ten and seven, sorry, and nine nine and seven. I should say almost ten and i've got a different problem as in that i don't even have available I, I can't even use my playstation anymore because my kids are always on it and if my <laughs> kids are not on it then it's my, oh, my, my kind of then it's my wife who's who's, who's on it so <laughs> well, i'll have to find problem. something else <laughs> so um, um just uh um, he, 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 he caution absolutely <laughs> or i'm gonna try something like this or I'm just gonna retreat back here to my studio, and I'm just gonna play with my uh, my Eurorack setup. Absolutely. Sure, yeah. 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 But the thing with the sick track is, like, you know, I'm. It's not something I should enjoy as much as I do. Like, in my... <laughs> but the thing is, you know, I'm making. You know, we've we've made the DHO, which is like one of these like crazy, complex, super insane modular things, yeah. and then somehow. I mean, tons of fun playing with the most preset machine I've ever owned in my life. Should we call uh, it a, 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 a guilty pleasure, time. even? Or, uh... Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but at the end, you know, it's like, I kind of have to uh, to wonder, you know, what do you want to do? Like, yeah, maybe you want to make music. The podcast. Yeah, exactly. No, it depends. I mean, you can make art no, films means... and still, wa still watch a fucking Netflix documentary. Yes. At the same time. So that's uh... maybe that's a discussion that could be interesting to have recorded, actually. <laughs> well, yeah, continue, continue. Yeah. Um, no, the thing is, yeah, it's like yeah, you wonder, you know what? Uh, what? Why would you get into the this stuff? You know, what? Do you, where do you find the enjoyment? And actually, that's something that I've been thinking so much about. Actually, in the design of the instruments, it's like, what? do you want to create, you know, like what, I, and then, you know, what I want to do is to make fun instrument that people enjoy using. But then I realized that that's not necessarily something that is always productive. You know, I know I might lose a bit of plans, in this, <laughs> but the thing is, you know, people don't get into modular because it's the most efficient uh, music machine, you know, um, it's about inspiration. People... Yeah. But what, this inspiration, like, what do you get out of it? What sort of satisfaction and so on, you know? So, um, like, and then I, like, then if you ask a room of people, you know, why do people enjoy your rack? Uh, modular synthesizers, you know? You'll get, like, you know, 10 different responses. Because people like building their own sounds, because people like, like, Lego sort of thing. People enjoy 
like challenging themselves because people enjoy like this kind of um, like boutique instruments. Like there's so many different reasons, you know. And the thing is, I don't think you can please everybody. Not in the sense like, you know, you cannot make one module that everybody is going to be into. Because some people are just going to be contrarians. They're going to be like, you know what? I'm going to hate it because everybody likes it. You know? Um, that doesn't happen and... in your Iraq. <laughs> no, never. No, no, because people are not going to buy a rampage instead of a mat, you know? It's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell Manu that. I've got both. <laughs> That's okay. We're in good terms. Oh, yeah. He's a great guy. Don't get me Absolutely, wrong. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's like when you start thinking about this stuff and everything, and um, like you know, I, I I play lots of video games, and I think there is kind of a um, kind of something that goes uh, together, like in sort of the design language and so on. I think a lot can be learned from designing video games for um, designing instruments, because in my mind, and that's a debate that I've had with other manufacturers, uh, like we are making toys. We are making mm -hmm. um, like physical things for people to get in their hands, be excited about, and then enjoy expressing themselves through and then play around and do things and so on. Like my, the, the focus is not necessarily um, on making um, straight on productivity. Exactly. It's not about that. Then you, actually, use, then you use Ableton or Bitwig or whatever. Exactly. You, you use <laughs> something where you have presets and what you have well, not necessarily presets, but something where you can recall whatever you're doing. You work in the box, you know, if you want to be efficient, just work on the computer. Really. Like, there's no, yeah. like hardware is a luxury that people enjoy for good reasons. It's a very enjoyable thing to do. And it's, uh, you know, these instruments are designed with love and to, to make things that are just very nice to, to just touch and play with, you know, like a, like the best feeling keyboard is not going to make you play keyboard better. It's just going to make it more enjoyable, you know? Yeah, and, and the like, only people who can play better is like the 0.0001% who actually play better when they get a better keyboard. Well, yeah. well look at the, uh, what, uh, the, the, the keyboard from the guy from uh, Dream Theater, you know? I oh, yeah. Like having, uh, <laughs> Rudis, I can't remember his name exactly, but I've seen him like, improvising on like the on the Keith Macmillan little like touch keyboard and so on like making a crazy solo on it I'm like yeah if this guy can do this on that <laughs> you know he doesn't need like the best weighted keyboard like the fata yeah, like multi-touch blah 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 it's like you know um it's all a matter of learning your instrument so like good feeling stuff uh about making you feel good, you know, which is an entirely valid yeah. well, like, reason to to get something. But I mean, also, you just imagine my, how, yeah. yeah, go ahead, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just, just imagine how long people think about, like, I can have, like, at least a two-hour argument, not argument, or interesting conversation about someone in the modular scene, about knobs, about oh, yeah. fucking knobs. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because people, and, because people think about this kind of stuff. People think and they're about they're passionate like how, about it as well. They're super passionate about it. What kind of knobs should we get? What like which? What, 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 how? What? How? Like how do we solve this problem? With which knob would be like the best for the for our use case? Which feels better? Which has better rigidity? Which is like, and and like it's the same with all kinds of. And this is just one example, right? There's all all of this goes through the entire lane of, of parts in this kind of instrument mm -hmm. and um we were we were having like discussions about buttons <laughs> and <laughs> you know like the, and and this is where the love comes in that arthur was talking about it yeah. takes the, the, the kind of passion for it and this is like this is what you get when you buy this kind of instrument absolutely yeah. and and one of the yeah. key things i hear back from people as well is that making music on modular um maybe because it's not as effective as just opening up uh ableton live or bitwig or cubase or whatever daw you've got but it's a cathartic almost 
therapeutic way of going about creativity. Um, mm. And of course, if, if you look into the world where we live in, everything is focused on efficiency. Everything is focused on improving productivity. Mm. But we know so many people who, at the end of the day, say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to work in my garden. You know what I'm going to do? As I'm, I'm going to take up woodworking or I'm going to take on... Yeah, sure. yeah. I, 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 I'll, I'll start painting. And mm -hmm. again, there's a lot of talented people out there, but we kind of safely assume that all the people who take on painting as a, as a hobby will never be... And they don't even aspire themselves to be... Uh, uh, featured in the Louvre or in any other museum, they do that yeah. because it's because they do it for themselves, and I think that that's something which is not necessarily a counterculture to combat that whole focus on efficiency, productivity as well. But it's about people spending time doing something they they, they love and cherish, and they mm -hmm. are willing and maybe even they need uh to spend a lot of time on that and they they want mm -hmm. to have that uh whether it's yeah. making sure your garden looks really nice whether it's making sure that your um well that 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 the the, the, the painting you've just made uh expresses your feelings and as we we talked about earlier there's nothing as um good as just plugging in some cables here or there whether you're three yeah. years old or wh whether you're 40 yes. years old 50 yeah. 60 yeah yeah and the thing is actually this is i really like this uh, analogy because you know these are tasks that you know taking a brush and putting paint on a canvas canvas is a very simple thing to put it there but the margin for mastery is insane. Like, it's gigantic. You know, there's been thousands of years of practicing of this. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, us as designers, we are the people making the canvas and making the paint and making the brushes and all of this. And I think you know, this is, you know, there, there are lots of questions nowadays, especially with like generative AI and everything. It's you see it as a as a threat or whatever. But I, <laughs> I mean, in our field, it's a non-question really because that's not people get into that because they want to do things. You know, they don't want something else to do it for them. So, mm -hmm. um, like, also what I think, and that's something that like kind of uh, the direction that we are aiming at in the in the future is also to try not necessarily simplify things as much as possible mm -hmm. but like i feel like at, at least some of the stuff that are gonna that are gonna come out in the future are things that are very that would be very complex in what you can do with it but uh, gives you a lot of very fundamental and very um, simple things to interact with so the idea is to deconstruct things to their simplest element and give oh, you all our stuff yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and give you a lot of them so that you are then drawn to experiment with it you, know, you put things next to each other that are related in some ways that would then allow you to express or learn even on how certain things work and i think this is like a direction that i really enjoy going into but is, and, that, is uh, that again to 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 use that 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 um video game analysis uh, or analogy as well hmm. um if you think back to um when the old blizzard uh even before the activision and later on the microsoft acquisition they hmm. always uh said we want to have games that are easy to learn but tough to master or hard to master even Mm -hmm. yeah. and is, is, is that also something as you said well we, we, we'll right. try to take some inspiration from video games which again yeah. video games are, are, are a time sink for a lot of people but they get so much 
fulfillment, so much exactly, yeah. uh, gratification out of playing a video game. And you might say at the end of playing a video game, yeah, you, you finished your game or not, um, but you enjoyed the time you spent with that. Yeah. So there are a few, like a few concepts that I really want to um, like apply into the design of instruments. Uh, there's the idea of the, the game loop. So um, the game like the, the of, apologies, the game, the, the game loop. So basically like when you play a video game, there would be kind of like cycling things. You go through a dungeon, you do certain things and then you finish the dungeon, kill the boss at the end or whatever. And then you start again, you know? Yeah. Or you go to a different phase and so on. So, but it's kind of like this when you do music as well. You would focus on different elements, one after the other, and um, we can be like either you know, you're designing the sound, working on the drums, doing this and so on, then you're working on your mix and your master, blah blah. And um, I think it's important to also kind of um, like understand this stuff. Is like how long do you want people to focus on your thing? Like how long do you want them to have to work on actually designing whatever yeah. sound or doing things with it? And how much the you know how much do you want to either be a tool or an inspirational thing? Do you want it to be efficient? Do you just want it to be like a very simple thing? Like you know, and then you know, depending on the size, the function of the module and everything, you design it so that you know you're not going to make a, a, like a small CV mixer take. 40 minutes to actually set it to do anything, you know, like, you know, I mean, this is uh, caricatural, but like, yeah, that's this stuff, you know, it's like, you have to, to know your place and understand the context of what you're doing. And the other thing is, um, it's a matter of like, uh, these ideas of player expression, like, um, you know, they would be like in video games, for example, there are games that are very constrained to what you can do and uh, results of your actions and so on. So that not, doesn't necessarily mean like, um, it can be like one action has a lot of different possibilities of uh, result, like in games, like uh, especially the Nintendo games are very good with this. You know, you've got very limited action that you can do, but are useful in very, in a lot of situations and you can combine them to do a lot of things. Or you offer a tool that can do a lot of things to solve one little problem, you know? Um, then, you know, and then you have to think of this context and just like, and also we're working in like, we we're making, you know, modular um, modules for now. And, um, okay, I'm, I'm going to put a pin in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, so then when you actually design in a modular system, you know, you have to always remember it's like, yeah, but when you designed the DHO, it was like, oh, yeah, but why can't you have like a clock telephones and like this stuff and that and this? And it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, well, it's, it's a modular system. You know, you've got CV inputs for everything. Let's use Absolutely, something. Absolutely, yeah. You know, um, so like, I don't think. I mean, at least for us, that's not what we're trying to, to do. I don't think we'll ever try and do something that does everything. And I think it's also okay to respect people like um, desire and intelligence to actually design sounds and really get into getting their hand dirty and spending time creating a sound um, instead of like offering them like a preset machine that would give them like a million different sounds. Even though this is like, it's got a, a market for it and i'm also very much enjoying this stuff as we were talking <laughs> absolutely about yeah track. Uh, but um yeah it's um it's, it's a different kind of offering you know you can't like i feel like making something that is very complex and involves you a lot to make any sort of sounds but then you offer like the gx7 for example would be like a great example of this you know you can't do any sound with it you can go <laughs> super deep you can make like some crazy sounds you can make that crazy but stuff. everyone always but just no, use the presets exactly <laughs> so you've got like a few people in the world that would make presets and everybody's using the presets because i mean, this was I mean have you, uh, <laughs> whoever played with the dx7 would tell you there's only one fucking fader on it <laughs> and uh yeah so no, absolutely yeah. yeah it's like you have to to understand what are you doing what are you trying to to provide you know like what is this toy for what is this instrument for is what is this tool for you know it depends on where you actually try to put yourself in you know so yeah that's the 
the idea. Like, and also I think like video game kind of actually teaches us a lot about this because it's a whole industry that is entirely focused on making interactive entertainment. So like stuff Absolutely. that you interact with, that you play with, that is entirely de dedicated for you to have fun. Absolutely. And I, I, the other thing I, I, I picked up on in that analogy, which I, which I love, and I'm going to, I'm going to steal that from, from you, um, is that episodic. It's uh, open source. <laughs> well, to, before before I uh, forget to mention, all of my videos are also released under Creative Commons. So if you want to remix this, everyone's able. That's to one. <laughs> <laughs> so, but if if we then look at uh, when you said, okay, well, it's all episodic. It, it it's it's it, it's iterative. It's uh, repeating. It's a loop. And I think that that's something that scares a lot of people away from modular, but maybe even from creating music uh, in general, is they've got this idea, well, okay, well, if I want to make music myself, I'll have to do everything all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, once I start designing, writing, uh, composing, I'll have to do everything and I, I, I'm just going to lose track of it. But if you then look at it from a, as you said, from, from a gaming perspective, where you said, we're just going to take on one task at a time. And at the end, you're going to level up. You're going to take on more skills. You're going to take on more, um, more, more, more approaches as well. And we, of course, do that from a gear perspective. But if we then take that into, let's say, actually creating music, that's also something what modular really does because okay well i've got a i've got an oscillator here and i've got my 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 filter my my vca i, I can i can build one layer with that in my overall mm -hmm. composition and i do that today tomorrow i haven't mm -hmm. touched any of my dials so my my patch is still there i don't have to load anything it's still physically there as long as the yeah. cats or the kids haven't touched it. <laughs> as long as changed. nobody turned it off and on again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. indeed. And then you can just keep on building on that. So you, you, you do level up in a sense uh, mm -hmm. within, yeah. within modular. Yeah, what, what I use it definitely. And what I also, what I've also seen and what I'm doing myself is I think, especially if you haven't got a, like a huge system, then you're constrained by the way you can, like you have to layer, you have to make one layer and then you have to maybe you sample that or like record it and then you repatch everything and do another layer because you just don't have the, yeah. the, the space or the modules for it to, mm. to kind of work that out. Absolutely, and that, that's yeah. also the, the beauty of it, right? That's the iterative approach. Yeah. No, but th th this, is, this is one of the things, yeah. Well, well, you this is one of the things what people say if you've got like uh, maybe uh, 500 hp of modules just take a tiny case and limit yourself because that limitation will drive your creativity your personal creativity more than when you're overwhelmed with the um with the availability of choice and i think yeah. that yeah there's a there's a lot to say for that as well and i and i do think that maybe something like a sec track or an OPZ, or maybe an, an OP1. I haven't used an OP1, to be honest. Um, but also things like what I really love for just my downtime are things like pocket operators. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, but I also great. really, really like the, um, and, and I know this is a bit of a, uh, um, a bad thing to say, but I also like the Volkas in that regard. Um, because you can... with the focus. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> well, and one of my best friends, um, who is actually making a living out of uh, music, uh, and he plays in a metal band, and I've played with Ma with him in metal bands for quite a while. Um, and he's now, um, uh, uh, apparently, I've given him the virus of uh, liking synthesizers, but he's he's <laughs> he's, he's he's getting so much value about a Volker keys and and this guy is a literal 
virtuoso. He can play anything. Mm -hmm. Like you just said, well, when you see uh, the guy from Dream Theater just working on that uh, duo Neo from uh, from Keith McMillan, he, he's at that same level. I've, I've got another interview. I'm going to link uh, to that interview here as well, Clemens Reyes. Um, and, and that's it. You don't need to have much to be creative. But it is nice to have good tools or if how how you mentioned it toys to play with <laughs> and yeah i mean you know you call you call them however you want you know um the thing is you know like i said toy these are serious toys as well you know Absolutely, i don't want to, yeah. to like uh, get into the the thing say oh yeah these are toys so they're not no no no, no. To be taken i i know i know no, how you like meant serious. it no, don't you worry <laughs> but, um, no i mean what I mean, when I say toys, it's like, it's about having fun with them. You know, like Absolutely. nobody needs a Euro system, <laughs> really. Like even people that had need some synthesizer sounds, you don't, nobody needs. Yeah, maybe there's a handful of, of people in the uh, I, 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 I need them and, and then probably I can get a doctor's <laughs> note. I can get a doctor's note that I need them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy, buy our modules, by the way. Buy, buy. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> buy A to V project modules today. Yeah. Available at Schneidersladen, <laughs> Midi Amsterdam, and yes. everywhere else. <laughs> yes. Signal sounds. Signal sounds, yeah. Yeah, yeah. signal sounds, perfect circuit, all of them. <laughs> well, yeah. the beautiful thing is, every time I hear the name signal sounds, I immediately think uh, of Myla Melodies, because with all of his podcasts, he's got this yeah, tremendous yeah. intro and the beautiful interest yeah <laughs> just <laughs> how <laughs> he pronounces yeah, the I name and then i saw online people talking about it i was like yeah this is fucking ridiculous <laughs> i love yeah. it i love it and i've i've, 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 I've done yeah, a yeah, yeah. i've done a great interview uh with him as well uh probably like two years ago and he's a lovely fellow don't get me wrong yeah. he's absolutely amazing and he is um he is so sophisticated in his own in his own way. Mm. I would um, I would probably uh, aspire to l reach that level of sophistication, but I'll never do that. I'm 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 way too down to earth. But he is so he's up there. He's up <laughs> absolutely up there. But this is a I'll nice. I'll never say never. A... I never say never. Who knows? Who knows? But this mm. is actually a nice segue into. Um, another topic I, I wanted to discuss. So, um, a couple of things is, of course, well, if I, we've, we've discussed the whole open source approach, we've discussed, um, uh, uh, all of your modules with the exception of one, but yeah, one, one, yeah absolutely. But mm -hmm. the one thing I also want to, uh, to discuss is your manual approach as in typically if i go to any sort of vendor whether it's a synthesizer or eurorack vendor or a um even just a computer accessory vendor if i go and i want to uh, have a look at the manual i'll always be presented with a pdf mm -hmm. Not with you guys. It's much more interactive. It's it's part of the web page. It's part of that experience as well. And we then have uh, the greats of this world helping you out. So uh, Reinder, uh, Monotrail, uh, Ben, yeah. DivKid. So how, yeah. how, did you, how, how, how did you get these people to, to help out with those sort of things? Well, Rinder is local, is in Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> we know each other for many years now. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, well, yeah, well, he, he's a countryman of mine, but um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I think he's been living in, uh, well, in Berlin for most of his years. Yeah. He's been uh, forever, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, his first ever hardware review was the 16. It was? And, I uh, didn't know that. It was, oh, it wow. was, it was, it was, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, the thing is, honestly, I think the, the manual is somewhere where, like, as a, what we could do, us as a company, could be done better. 
I always feel like it's, you know, you can never do enough in this sense. Like you can make videos, you can have people make videos about it, mm. get these people interested in doing, you know, um, gear reviews and so on. Mm -hmm. But at the end, it's like, I don't know, I, it's a very tricky thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I always try to do it as like at the highest quality that is possible and really like as a company and as like what we would provide, I feel like what we should provide is something that is a bit more technical and a bit more down to earth and very like straightforward. If you go on the website and you look at the actual manual, yeah, it's, I want to be as detailed as possible and whatever question that you have, you go in there. And we're also very, um, we're listening a lot to all the, the, um, the, um, um, feedback that we get like, yeah, from our Discord yeah. mm -hmm. or from emails that we receive and so on that anything like anything that is not clear or whatever in the manual somebody made a mistake building a DIY kit or something like this I would directly go on the website and clarify whatever point where nice, the, the yeah. mistake was done or whether like a question was asked about this then I would go there and clarify whatever mm -hmm. is there and um I mean, but that, that's you know, a very yeah, that's, that's agile also, way of approaching it. So in yeah, that, that essence, agile, yeah. that's, that's, that's one of the, one of the um, advantages that you have when you, when you just have a website instead of a PDF. I mean, PDF, you can edit it very quickly as well, but then you have to upload a new version. People maybe have the old version Local saved copies, somewhere or something yeah, like that. Maybe. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know, like, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yes. But I, yeah. I don't know how, how like, YouTube work, but for, for me, I've I, I don't print stuff anymore. I hate I, I have a printer, but I hate it. I hate it with like every fiber of my being. Um, <laughs> it's it's just I I don't print stuff. We should make a T-shirt. So, <laughs> fuck the printer. With a passion, you hate it with a passion. That's with, the with like yeah, with a big big passion, and and like what 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 I do, and I think what a lot of people do is. Um, they look at the manual on their phone, they look at the manual on their tablet, they look at the manual on the computer. And websites, like oh, depending on how you do it, obviously, but it will <laughs> always look better than a PDF. In a PDF, you have to scroll, you cannot really, you have to have a good viewer, you have to, like, I don't know, it's it's It's, it's just not, not meant as... for a mobile device, don't get me wrong. It's, yeah. it's not meant to... Or you make it for a mobile device, but yeah. it would be actually outrageous on a computer. No, but if you've got a, 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 a well-designed, responsive uh, web page, uh, as you guys have, compliments for that, it makes Thanks. it much more um, easy to digest. Um, mm -hmm. th the one thing, of course, is, and this is this is a concern I've uh, I've had before, is, okay, well, we we've seen several Eurac companies who, um, well, post COVID had they had to call qu call it quits, mm -hmm. where they had to yeah. step mm -hmm. out, and of course, um, there's nothing wrong with that. They they've created beautiful uh instruments beautiful hardware and um they are now keeping their websites on online for um uh, for good reasons however how do we then perpetuate the knowledge and how do we then um make sure that in 50 mm -hmm. years when our kids are all grown up and we might have grandchildren or maybe something else who knows and they go into our attic and they find our old euro rack setup how will they then how, how will then they how will they then find out okay how to work with it of course well almost all euro rack uh, modules i've touched are very well uh let's say intuitive in that way but I am also mm -hmm. quite privy to uh, after I've not been able to do something after uh, trying it without reading the manual for two hours, finally giving up and then do read the manual. And I'm not saying PDF is the right answer. Um, uh, the, the Internet Archive is a great is a great source for those sort of things. But perpetuating mm. that knowledge. Um, 
<laughs> that, that's, that that's is an one thing. Discussion. <laughs> it's an interesting discussion. And you can apply it very generalistically if you want. But yeah. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. Like, I mean, how do you, how do how does anything like in fifty years we have no idea how things will look in fifty years. Yeah. But I think I, I, I don't think anyone will look for like a printed version of a manual anywhere. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I because it like, doesn't, it just doesn't exist anymore for that anything that you be... find nowadays. Um, that's kind of uh, like when you buy anything, there's no manual. No. Like if you want to figure out anything, there's no manual. You just print up. You have to put. The, put You're your lucky if there's a QR the code uh, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. I think. I think the best. <laughs> this. This is. I, I. I just. I just thought about it for like a split second, and then I came up with this answer. Is the best bet that we have is probably uploaded to GitHub, because because GitHub will probably <laughs> just never die. I think I think everything is on GitHub right yeah. now. I think it's going to be conserved for forever. I have another idea. How about actually putting the PDF or whatever, like a text file, like a text yeah, file, markdown or whatever. Yeah. yeah, just markdown. Yeah, on the module. Like in the memory of the module, just plug it to your <laughs> USB. Uh, well, I guess USB will be dead as well, but maybe some people are going to make adapters. That's amazing. Just plug the, <laughs> the device on your thing, and then you have got the TXT file. Well, do, do you like remember that golden the... disc on the, the, the Voyager probe that contained yeah. all of those messages on, on yeah. how to decode it? Maybe that's the answer. But again, yeah. well, I'm of but course. I had uh, devices it. that I that had the manual on. You would plug it to your computer, and it would also appear as a. I think that's amazing. USB right? device yeah. and have the the manual on there. If you ever Google for like a manual for like a washing machine or something like that, it's it's it's, it's intense. It's a completely. Oh, yeah. It's it's. <laughs> I can see trauma in your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's not it's not a thing you want to do. Yeah. No, indeed. And then you you are being presented with like yeah. fifteen hundred clickbait links first, saying I've got yeah. the manual, and then yeah, no, I, I, <laughs> I know what you mean, Chris. Absolutely. No, but that 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 that's also a thing because the beauty is, um, and I think it's going to be true for um, for purely analog modules as well as for more digital uh, modules is. If you store them well and you turn them on in 50 years, it's going to be a okay to work with. Yeah, and probably that, is, yeah. And, and, and that's one of the beauties uh, of working with, with physical uh, physical things. If I'm going to store a um, my Ableton project or my Bitwig project or whatever DAW you've got today, and I'm going to store it somewhere, and even though if that medium survives, Who's going to tell me that my grandkids, if I ever have them, are going to be able to load that up in that in 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 that version of the of any sort of DAW that might exist at that point in time? But that's where there conservation is. really plays a, a yeah. pivotal role. Yeah, but also, uh, I mean, when you think about it, you know, a lot of the vintage stuff that people actually care about, you know, all the old synthesizers from the 60s, 70s, and so on, they all have by now the schematics online. Um, yeah, no worries. Take your time, Chris. I guess, yeah, if Continue. people, yeah, I'd be incredibly proud if people would still care about the other stuff in 50 years, honestly. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's a very interesting topic. It's not, you know, something that necessarily like think too much about. No, but... indeed, but but just stepping away from a PDF and and going into something like Markdown on GitHub or on 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 the device itself, or just have an HTML on the website. That's always going to be. Well, yeah, uh, it's easier yeah, to actually update. Storing the stuff on the devices, if we can, that's actually you know, a good way. Like because then it never gone you know if, as long as the device works then it's there absolutely yes that would be a way as long as the usb protocol is still running in 50 years or whatever i uh, guess some versions of it is still going to be there absolutely yeah. but i but i am conscious of time so when, when when chris because i originally planned oh it's going to be like an hour 90 minutes yeah. and I, I i i've got no problem with going over of course but i uh I know that uh, we, we, we've got some other 
things to discuss. So we'll, um, if you guys are all right with that as well, um, just quickly talk about the uh, the old one out today, which is the CDVCA. Oh, geez, I need oh, to yeah. look it up. Mm -hmm. um, but in, indeed, I'm also interested to understand uh, what you're planning, what your um, vision is going forward. And I don't, sure. I'm not going to talk about four years or five years from now, but maybe for the next 12 months. I want to know um, uh, where you guys will be at, which events you're going to attend. I'm assuming yeah. you're going to go into your back garden and attend Super Booth. And, yeah, yeah, we'll uh, <laughs> And then we'll probably close up. Sure. Yeah, that sounds good. But I love um, the sec track discussion as well. So I'll, 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 what I might, my, my initial thought was immediately, oh, I'm going to take that part and just put it at the end in the blooper reel or something. <laughs> I'm going to go to the bathroom as well. Yeah, no, no take your time. Take your time. I'm, I've got to catch up with Chris. Uh, as I was just saying to, saying to, saying, saying to Artu is... Um, there are a couple of things I, I do want to touch upon. It's, of course, the C, uh, CDVCA. Um, um, a couple of things on where you guys see the whole project going in the next foreseeable future. Uh, of course, as always, uh, share what you can, uh, share mm -hmm. what you want. And I'm, of course, very understanding of... Um, things that might not want you 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 might not want to have online yet um quickly touch upon super booth as well and then probably ramp uh, wrap up what i did discuss sure. just now yeah. with with us as well is the whole sec track uh discussion the whole uh, video <laughs> game discussion i am gonna yeah. put that online i might put it in the blooper reel or anything but uh, i think it was mm. a great discussion and there was a, there, there are some great things in there um which might be valuable for people um yeah sure we I'll... kind of we kind of like kind of i don't know ramped it up <laughs> No, it's, right. it's there, all there meandering, like, oh, let's, let's, and we're 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 finding our own yeah. ways. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I love that. I love that. But by the way, are, are we now at your home or are we at Arthur's home right now? Not as my home. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I just it's want to uh, yeah. quickly check that because I, I I don't want to disturb anyone, and I know we're already way over time. So apologies for that, <laughs> no, but I do I, I do appreciate that. Um, no, it's been it's been great. It's a, it's a lot of fun. It, it, yeah. I love these things, and I um, sometimes people ask me, oh, "Well, do you have a script? How much prep work do you do?" And I'm like, "I don't have a script. I read up on anything I can find. I, I watch as much videos mm -hmm. as I can, but typically it's it's just a a conversation among friends, and we are philosophizing." about all the things that that come up and sometimes we go all the way and we get sidetracked and talk about well no, uh, co I, I conservation the, the uh, con yeah. conversation uh, yeah indeed yeah <laughs> so um before we dive into the well the last module we haven't discussed um a couple of questions about the dho so um again you've got the Eurorack Rockstar uh, Ben Div Kit mm -hmm. to do a great video on it. Um, so how has the community interest been into the DHO uh, recently? Has it picked up? Are you seeing a lot of interest? Uh, are you now working day and night on producing more modules that you ever imagined? Or how is that, how is that evolving currently? Um, what I can see at this point the thing is uh, this was released in late november yeah which is not the best time to release big expensive modules um but it's been very positive for the for the company as a like a, a go when we look at uh, stats on like a visits on the website we've multiplied it by like seven or eight oh, wow. basically since the release of the video <laughs> Uh, which was the, the, the whole point of releasing this product. Um, so um, we'll see. It's a it's going to be it's a big expensive product. 
Uh, I know we're not going to sell thousands of them. Um, it's going to take a while. Um, yeah, that's another point. Like this was that's a, not this the point. It's a product like made a, out of like it's a passion product. Absolutely, it was like no, it was really, a master. Like, it's your masterpiece. That's that's like cool. what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Until the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm no, going to no, put another pin in that to... as well because like, you've <laughs> no, you, you've been was... you've been teasing us all this time about what you're working. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> uh, no, but it was like really like, um, it was a very much a challenge, uh, both in like uh, expected challenge in the sense that like I'm doing this, we're doing this to challenge ourselves. Mm. And I then realized how much of a challenge it actually was. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean it's a it's 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 a really big one. I mean, there's like something like I don't know, like uh, six or seven different power rails in it, and like a thousand parts, and it's wow, like there's like twelve VCAs in it, and <laughs> two oscillators, and a twenty channel, like you know, DAC ADC uh, crazy thing. It's it's like it's not a reasonable thing to to do <laughs> like for it does not make sense for any company to go and do this and, and that's why you did it <laughs> no that's not why we did that that's just... we did it in spite of that <laughs> we did it in spite oh, of that we okay. did it because i i uh, somehow i thought that was a good idea yeah which you know, in some respects, it is. In some other, I think, like in terms of sanity and uh, the color of our hair, isn't. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, yeah, you know, that's how you learn. You know, you have to challenge yourself and like do the, the absolute. It's not even the best you can do. It's the best you cannot do. It's like doing, like aiming for the absolute insane thing. And the thing is also one. Not necessarily, maybe like even more motivating thing is that funny enough, like the Super Bowl 2022, okay. we got the first prototype working two days oh, before. Right. Yes. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> right. I wasn't there. We, I was there the to, year after. Yeah. The and <laughs> no, <laughs> like I was so happy this thing was actually working. We we're going to be able to show it. <laughs> that yeah i had a really big hangover the next day i remember we continued drinking with the my mother-in-law <laughs> she showed up on the balcony and was like, That's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> but basically like gin and tonics yeah gin and tonics yeah it was kind of the celebratory thing but um well you've been to super booth i've been there uh, uh for... in 2023 uh sorry 2022 but i wasn't able to attend last year but i'm planning to be there uh, this year, of course. Oh, yeah, come. So, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. By the booth, we'll have. Cool oh, stuff. yeah, no worries. <laughs> Gin and tonics, apparently. <laughs> oh, maybe. 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 Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Can't promise anything. I, I think it's probably illegal. But, uh... No, they're saying them in the tent next month. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um... I know that's true for a fact. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, one of the things also we kind of announced maybe slightly too early, like kind of presented it like as soon as we had the, like the first prototype working, which actually looked a lot. I mean, look, in terms of hardware, like the functions and so on, is actually fairly close to the final results. Yeah, it's very close, yeah. But it was way too early to to show something like this. But that actually put us some pressure into, mm. yeah, just actually bringing it to the market and like like people who expected it and yeah i was people I was... knew about it and i you know on the first like yeah. in 2022 like like i had some shots like sending me emails like oh, i'd like to pre-order like a bunch of them it's like yeah but yeah okay I, sure. I, I remember i took a week off my other job to like crunch down the <laughs> the oh the no firmware just just to get it in time for super, super food and then i finished it like two days early uh, two days before well, yeah. 
and um, that is like seventy five percent of the firmware that is running on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we used to call that extreme programming, right? So uh, yeah. where you had to do and just make it as hacky and as cringe as possible, but if it works, it works. If it works, it works, yeah. and then you can always make it better. But um, actually, in between, we then uh, we started working with uh, Signal Sound for distribution. We actually started now, like from then on, actually getting like some proper advice on how to do things properly, and um, yeah, that also helped a lot and uh, really made a lot, like offload a lot of the work from from me, not who had to you know try and sell stuff to all the shops around and so on. So. Um, yeah, more and more we're actually focusing on the design and actually releasing a lot of the um, the tasks that are you yeah. know production sourcing whatever. Love to you know the marketing and so on. So it's all of the yeah, business so, side of it. Yeah. Yeah, I have to decide. You know what do you want to do? You know, so but the PSC decides the design. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but if you, but if you now look at your uh, existing portfolio. Um, uh, which is currently your, well, best-selling or most popular uh, one that's out there? And I'm not basing this on on modular grid, but just on what your uh, feedback no. is from the from the co from the community essentially. In terms of sales, the 69 has always been the, the biggest yeah. selling thing because uh, it had a name before we started making it, and um, it became a staple of. Uh, of the modular uh, world and um, I mean I don't know what the numbers are but I mean we, we've sold a lot of them uh, significantly and yeah. That, yeah and um, so yeah that really kept the, the, the whole company afloat and actually allowed us to do everything we're doing now so um, yeah definitely the 16 has been the, the, the biggest setup and um, but that's because the 16 name is already is. quite well known, of course. But yeah, but yeah. then if we look at the, the the remaining three, like the Gato, the uh, CDVCA, and of course now, of course, also the DHO, uh, yeah. where do you see that shifting towards in those three? I see a lot of traffic on the website of people looking at DHOs. I can imagine. Um, I don't expect... Uh, you know, as many people would buy a DHO as they would buy a um, 16N just because it's, you know, twice the price. <laughs> um, and it's also a lot more specialized. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, the um, overall, what we, like, the, the, I think what's important in the, like, when you're doing this, you know, your rack is a very novelty based uh, market. If you look at it in the business side, you know, so people are going to buy the newest and hottest thing. And um, so you basically have to release stuff regularly. And that's one of the mistakes that we did on a kind of, a kind of business thing is that we spent two years working on the DHO and I didn't release anything since the, the CDVCA. Why we could have, you know, released maybe a few more little things in between. Um, mm -hmm. so um, that's like a, maybe a little advice for <laughs> aspiring. Uh, to no, but writing. again, these, these lessons learned are of course very valuable. Yeah. 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 And, um, yeah. And it's also as like, as doing this, I think would, it's good for your sanity and for, just for like creativity and enjoyment of doing this, not to focus on only one project at a time. Mm -hmm. and just have a few little things running and um, have like hard deadlines on really like setting yourself so like, okay i'm releasing this then i'm releasing this that and so on but also allow you to not only work on one thing and crunching and like destroying yourself and just be like yeah, i just want to i'm just working on this one thing you know you have to have fun doing things you know in general and it's not fun to do the same thing over and over and over again you know to um, divert your attention with some other different and things. And fo focus on the most important things first. Yeah, family. <laughs> uh, I, was, uh, I was just about to say. But then again, um, if, if we then look at um, 
the other two modules so the dhu the dho being more like um a, a love child uh, which is a culmination of two years of uh, blood sweat and tears uh but if we then look at the gato and the C, uh, cdvca um those are of course very inspiring smaller mm -hmm. more affordable modules and yeah. um specifically when i look at the gato um and i hopefully understand it well enough is how, how do you then see people actually using multiple gatos as a uh, as a shift register because a lot of the co the content i've i found online was mainly people using just one of them in yeah. the way that uh, you can use it but the actual well the next level approach to it uh, as to combining maybe uh three four f or or even more yeah uh, how so do you see that being uh, the... be, be, be being uh, embraced by the community so the gato has a lot of the tropes of the first module uh, that people would release like companies and usually you either have two things that a company would release in the first modules or like a designers or aspiring designers or like yeah <laughs> so it would either be a clone of something with additional functions to try and make it different or something that is so specialized that would solve one problem but then you would kind of push it to do more and more and more and become like incredibly obscure modules that are very difficult to get uh that's i, I know some of them yeah. basically <laughs> yeah um but I think yeah, when other designers come to me and like the, the first advice I, I, I give them is just like when you're working on a module, just release it as early as you can. Just go release your first module and don't work on the second one. <laughs> because the first one is never going to be the best. <laughs> really. <laughs> and, um, you know, you, you have to go through the product and you learn from it, you do stuff and you have to also accept a certain level of imperfection yeah then the um, the vca uh the city vca i think that's uh, actually it's a module that i'm very proud of and i think it is because it's so it's very different in the sense that it's i mean it does a lot of things that other modules can do like filtering vca distortion and so on but the technology behind it is something that has never really been done before uh, because and it's based on the cmos that... chip you mean or no, it's a it, no. There's no CMOS in it. It's uh, based on class D amplification. CMOS oh, is yeah, a yeah. gate on. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I, I so, mixed them up. So apologies. No, no problem. So yeah, the the CDVCA is based on class D amplification. It's kind of it's really based on that was the very early time when I started thinking about what a NATO project module should be, and one of the idea was that you know I, I always had this focus about exploration and kind of trying to make things that would be inspiring, like whatever this means. <laughs> but I figured I, I understood something at this point that was that to promote uh, exploration and uh, push people into trying to do new things with their instruments is that you have to reduce the cost of exploration. So the idea is that if you have an instrument that is too based on sweet spots mm -hmm. and it would sound like the it's about the difference between when it sounds good and when it sounds bad you know the difference between when you have settings that are working well together and working yeah. the settings that are not working so well together if the difference is too big people will not want to divert from the good stuff meaning that they will not they would just set now. it and not touch it. And they would be very fearful from modifying any of the parameters. So one of the ideas that I had in early on was like, okay, I want to make an instrument that sounds good, whatever you do with them. You know, like sacrifice yeah. a bit of the sweet spot stuff and then go for an average sounding, you know, quality to be just good overall. So whatever you do with it, it's going to sound okay. It's going to work. Yeah. It was kind of the idea. And it was very optimized in, to work in such a way and uh, try and, you know, 
<laughs> work into this way. Of course, that has said things that work better than others. Uh, it's for everything. But um, that was one of the one of the ideas at the beginning. But developed you know, over like the, the four years that we've been four five years that have been doing this mm-hmm. now into what it is now. But um, that was kind of the very early thing. And also, there are no other you know class D VCAs in Iraq. Um, if you really want one, then you have to get this one. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, class D distortion sounds pretty good. <laughs> That's what I want to say because if I if I listen to the the demos that I've um, that I've seen, it's a sound you don't typically get in your rack. Uh, you can get that similar sound in in in, in some very obscure uh, vintage synthesizers, but typically mm-hmm. in your rack. Um, I've got an idea on how I could emulate that sound, but I'll, I'll never be able to build that on my own with just the modules that I've yeah. got today. Yeah, and especially not in 6 HP. It's, uh, yeah. it's, uh, That's yeah, another I thing, yeah. I, I would probably need at least this to to mm-hmm. emulate or to actually even get close to it. Yeah, I mean, that's how this module was prototyped. It was done on a modular system. It was plugging stuff together uh, and uh, see how it would sound, you know, like putting all the bits and blocks together and um, see if it actually worked. And that's what uh, one of the great thing about uh, Eurac, and that's also, I think, one of the reasons why there are so many designers is that when you get into that, you can prototype the idea that you have, like the module, because a lot of the modules are also basically a patch in a module. So, um, yeah. So um, I guess yeah, but that, that's but that, that, that's, also... a, that's a that's a great uh, way to to look at things, and I think that um, if you then think about what your um, uh, I'm not quite sure if you guys know this term, your B hag is your uh, your big gorilla audacious goal. Uh, mm-hmm. Where do you? And I'm not going to ask you where you want to see yourselves in five years, but where do you? want to lead a to v project towards uh what would be the ideal situation in any sort of time in the future how would you like people to revere um a to v project want to do what no you're the visionary <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm just the, uh, just you. I'm just the, the mere executor. No, no, um, <laughs> no. Actually, no, one no, thing no, 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 is no. that, um, yeah, I would like you know to to, to have uh, more people involved really like uh, deeply into the design. That could be something that could do more. Also, the thing is, I one thing uh, again going back to the the DIY thing. Uh, the, the open source thing is that I f- would like to design modules in a way that um, not only something that you enjoy, but something that you kind of learn from and grow from, you know, because I like, guess some modules like math, for example, or so on, that is so deconstructed to their fundamental uh, building blocks that you it makes you feel great about it's like this lego kind of feeling it's like yeah. you're building your thing and you are feeling proud of discovering these new functions and creating these functions and doing things so i want to create playgrounds where people can um, really grow with and also by creating these things that are so deconstructed and so based on their building blocks that then become a playground to build very complex things um, and then allow you to yeah just express yourself as a as a musician you know yeah and of course so not you, only as you, a musician you, but as a synthesis let's call it this way a like, synthesis uh, as, a, as a as a musical scientist almost exactly, <laughs> musical yeah. scientist it's like yeah, yeah uh, testing you yeah i i think this yeah this is the this is the way um Things are going. The I think in general, what we what we aim to do, and I think this is going to be exciting because we are at a point where we um, 
where we test out things. And I think this where we basically kind of swing the pendulum and see how far we can swing it. Oh, nice. And so, yeah. like, let, let, so the, I think the next couple of products are going to be very interesting and maybe also very polarizing. Um, this is all I want to say. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because I, I think we're testing the waters uh, of, of new exciting things. And mm -hmm. we want to we take this approach that Arthur just described. And we are going with it, like full on. Yeah. I love that. It's going to be taken far. And it's not going to be products that are, they're not going to be made to please anybody. <laughs> they're really going to be there to test people also in yeah. a way. It's like you, you get these things, you know, it's, I don't want to go into the, the stereotypical thing, but it's going to be the dark souls of, <laughs> of yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, it's like if you stick with it, if you go there and if you push it, maybe, maybe, maybe that's a good energy, anyways. I, 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 mean, I love dark souls. It's my favorite game. Like it. like I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by this analogy. That's okay, we're 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 gonna get a rogue light kind of module going forward where you need to uh stop drop and roll all the time and okay i'm, I'm intrigued but every time uh, you uh, untouch uh, it the interface changes <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah okay uh, I, I i'm now I'm, a, I'm quite a visual guy so what i'm now seeing is a a eurac module where all of the patch points and all of the pods and all of the sliders all of the knobs are continuously shifting location and just to test <laughs> but I, I i i i don't really think you guys would be that cruel because it would cause a lot of tangled cables as well but oh. I, I, <laughs> you're way too oh, nice no no, no. <laughs> but, and I, I i don't want to call you out but again i'm, I'm really intrigued with what you've shared on what you're uh, what you're working on um then the question becomes is is this something that we can expect uh, to see at super booth or should we schedule no. a uh, another call <laughs> after not. that um we're aiming at releasing something for machina Bristanica. Mm -hmm. mm. um that would be part of this pushing things Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to tiptoe around all of this, right? So uh, I'll okay. do my best here. So <laughs> we, have a, we have a release planned in late March, beginning of Ooh. April, maybe. Fingers uh, crossed. Yeah. Then we have planned something for yeah, Machina. Um, and then we have a really big thing for 2025. Maybe super good. Oh, oh no, we said Makina. We said Makina, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, unless you want really to. No, 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 Well, uh, uh, he just said uh, that he, you were the one that was uh, actually building s certain things until the 11th hour. So I wouldn't push him <laughs> if I were you, Chris. <laughs> no, uh, I love deadlines. <laughs> you need deadlines. <laughs> I need deadlines. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good <detail. laughs> no, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really intrigued, no. guys, and I, I, I love to see <laughs> what you're uh, working on. One thing I always ask the people that I've been, well, allowed to question and bombard with all of my, well, let's call them, in, uh, well, very intrusive questions is, do you have any questions for me? We had some questions for you. We had we had a we had a great we had some great discussions. Oh Ooh. God! <laughs> <laughs> you really want to go this way? <laughs> uh, yeah, we just had dinner before. That. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that's not what I mean. It's it's it's, it's, it's all right. I I don't I don't think so. No philosophical, very deep. Oh man, he's pushing us now. <laughs> yeah, anything about um uh, What time is it? Okay, eleven thirty one. Yeah, that, that 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 so now this is the time where we can get really deep and philosophical. 
and I've had all kinds of questions asked by by, by, by previous guests. So, you, especially because it's the two of you, you need to. One I should have prepared them. for this. We should have prepared for this. It's like a job interview, man. I mean, I haven't one of the one of these for like ten years. Um, how are you? <laughs> I'm How doing really doing? well, and, I'm, and, I, and that's well. Essentially, that's the best question there is. I'm doing really it, well, it and and the main question. reason is is these couple of hours really felt as just three guys hanging out, having a conversation, talking about things they love, things they are passionate about, um. And I want to thank both of you for that, because allowing me to be part of your stories, your um, the journey up until this point, your dreams, your hopes, your expectations for the future. Um, that's something very intimate. And I want, again, mm -hmm. to thank both of you for that. And um, I think I speak on behalf, not just of myself, but hopefully all of the the audience that's going to listen to this is we can't wait to see what you guys have planned because um you've been teasing us the entire time <laughs> so yeah no honestly i can't wait to see as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, that's a beautiful yeah that's a good thing that, I, I can imagine that that's a good answer that's, the that's prototyping a good response process, you know it's like mm -hmm. you have this idea and then and then you make it real and then you see it and then, and then you let somebody else play with it without saying anything. And it's, it's a very painful experience because they can't figure out anything. It's like, and if there's okay, one thing to be said about the Eurorack space is we're very passionate, but we're very direct, you might say. It's almost yes. like we're, yes. it's almost like we're Dutch. The whole Eurorack community essentially is Dutch, direct and rude. Yeah. No, we, we, we say we scare because we care. Yeah. This is um, yeah. This is this is the usual the tenor. Mm. No, I, I mean um thanks for having us. This this yeah, was just great. great. And Absolutely. especially because you, as you said you haven't been doing this for such a long time. Yeah, um, I had to I had to I'm, take a short sabbatical, but I'm back in full force. Um, so you guys, and again, thanks so much for uh, for doing that, are the first of the interviews that I've been doing uh, up until this point. The first one after that sabbatical. Um, in parallel, I'm of course doing um, uh, module, synthesizer, anything that has to do or is a, well, at least you can consider it being related to, uh, to Eurorack. Uh, videos and yeah. I won't say I, I do reviews, but I'm more like, hey, this is this is what it does, this is how it works, and this is how I use it. Mm. And I'll yeah. then let the the audience actually form their own opinions because they are. Mm. Uh, what works for me doesn't work for uh, probably like ninety nine point nine percent of the of the rest of the people. <laughs> But again, I want to uh, provide with some insights and maybe some things that others don't do. Um, but again, guys, thanks so much. It's way, we're like 90 minutes over time and we're still here <laughs> talking about, and we could continue doing this until like, well, until the break of dawn and especially. Yeah, don't, don't it's, 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 it's February and. Um, and I, I and if I take if I had to take a wild guess, we're um, all three of us. We're not twenty one anymore, so we can't party until uh, the break of dawn. We've got other things to do when we need to sleep and we need to. Uh, well, we live in Berlin, be, man. <laughs> yeah, be be responsible adults again. You know, my so, daughter keeps me awake until very late. So, yeah. <laughs> so after Chris. Again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. And, for oh, uh, second, can I, I want to I plug one thing. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, join our Discord. Oh, yes, we, we, just, we, just, Absolutely. we just recently we just recently launched our Discord. Um, I don't know, like four months ago, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, yeah. And it's been going great. People are joining, like not, not, not in a crazy way, but it's like it's, it's growing steadily. And we're having nice discussions, and like this is the way you can reach us anytime because yeah. I'm there, like I'm online all the time. 
um yeah. we we hang out there chat with us this is this is the way to reach yeah. out people already shared some you know custom firmware some like extra 3d printed parts nice. and stuff like this for the the device we make so it yeah it's like that's super really positive. nice super nice yeah i'll make sure that we'll have a link somewhere up here or down there to link to your discord and yeah. um Perfect. Yeah, of course. If anyone has any trouble uh, joining the Discord, please reach out to uh, any of us three, and we'll make sure that it's going to be done. Um, mm -hmm. Again, everyone who's been tuned in for this probably new world record of interviews <laughs> with A to V Project. Wow. This is a great way to restart a series. <laughs> I would say stay safe, stay healthy. Arthur, Chris, thanks again. Cheers. Thank you very much. Have a great one. Cheers. Tom. Cheers.